Yeah! The following Angel Wing chapter takes place between 10 a.m. and 10.01 a.m. Chapter 2. Movie Night Mishap. <laughs> Delilah woke up the next morning feeling tired, but otherwise fine. She showered, letting the hot water relax her taunt, sore muscles. She dressed quickly and then started on her hair. She curled it into a wavy fashion that Alistair had taken a liking to when he had been around, you know, two years ago. The thought brought up a hard lump in Delilah's throat. She stared at the mirror, wondering what was going on. She couldn't see her reflection anymore. Was she a vampire? She'd only known Alistair for a couple of years before he had left. They hadn't known, even known each other that well. Why was she starting to have these feelings two years later? It didn't make sense. No sense at all. Like this book so far. She finished doing her hair before heading downstairs for breakfast. Her mother, dad, and younger brother, Kyle, were already down there. Morning, sweetheart, her mother said, hugging her. Delilah smiled weakly at her. Delilah ate her cereal, lucky charms in case you wanted to know, in silence. Is something wrong, Delilah? Her mother asked, concern on her face. It's nothing, Mom! How are you sure? I'm sure! Delilah said, clearing the table and going over to the sink. She washed her bowl out and put it in the dishwasher. She grabbed her book bag and left the house. It was freezing outside, so Delilah clung to her jacket against the freezing air, wishing she could wear the cloak that Alistair had made for her, because it looked so pretty. It would look so peculiar at school, though, so she just jumped in the car and turned on the heat. It came slowly, but the car grew warmer with every second. Ah. She started the car and drove to school, her mind full of thoughts about someone who warmed her in a different way. Ooh, yeah! After parking in the old school parking lot, Delilah headed inside. The cold morning air stung Delilah's face, like small, invisible insects were nibbling at her face. Ooh, that's an idea for a sequel. Rubbing her hands to keep them warm, Delilah headed to the section of the school where her friends gathered during breaks. Turning the corner, she caught sight of Mitch, Stephanie, Chelsea, Mike, Annalise, and Jaden. Let's start with Hello, Delilah, said Mitch, motioning to the spot on the floor next to him. She sat down, feeling tired again. The others said various versions of Mitch's statements, such as, Hi, Delilah, Sup, Delilah, and Hey, Delilah, what be chilling with your bad self? Some smiling, but others not looking up from their assorted homework that hadn't been finished the previous night, because everyone's a slacker in high school. Mitch had his copy of The Wuthering Heights out and was reluctantly reading, occasionally scribbling notes inside. Mike and Annalise were scuffling and laughing nearby. Mike trying to tickle Annalise's feet while Annalise was trying to defend her feet with mixed success. Chelsea looked up from looked up at Delilah, her face quizzical. Delilah, did you understand problem th What's wrong? Delilah hurriedly tried to replace her glum expression with a neutral one. Far too late to go unnoticed. I was just remembering about Alistair, she said, surprising herself by flushing instinctively. Chelsea looked thoughtful for a second, then replied softly. I know. I remember him, too. He was always there if you needed him. We all miss him. You'd think we'd have gotten over it since it's been two years now, but I guess we still talk about old friends who we really didn't know that well. She gave Delilah a reassuring smile before getting up, pulling her book bag up next to her. Come on, we're gonna be late for class. She was quite right. People had started to move through the halls with more purpose, hurrying to their first period. Delilah grabbed her books and walked softly down the hall. She made it into her honors biology class just as the bell rang. What? Time passes! Three and a half hours later, Delilah exited her AP English class feeling thoroughly strained. Why did teachers feel the need to give such large assignments? I must have at least three hours of homework to do, she mumbled grumpily. She also had indoor track after school, meaning she would be up late again tonight. She was so stressed out as she walked towards the cafeteria for lunch, she ran right into someone halfway down the hall, knocking the books out of their hands. I'm so sorry, she said exasperatedly, tr kneeling to pick up her books, flushing furiously at her own stupidity. The other, leaning down to help her, his left hand reached out to grab her math book, and Delilah saw that it was covered with a thin, leathery glove. That wasn't the strangest part. The material was a deep shade of green. It also looked very familiar. I wonder who it could be. Please, read on and let us know, I'm sure you're thinking. Delilah looked up the figure, but he'd already stacked her books on one on top of another and had walked past her down the hall. Delilah turned and noticed a boy with dark brown hair in a ponytail walking away, his gloved hand at his side. It's Michael Jackson! She tried to follow him, but the flow of the people headed to lunch pushed back down the hall in the opposite direction. She headed to lunch, contemplating what just happened. After paying for her food, she headed to the alcove where her friends hung out. Mitch, Jaden, and Stephanie were already there, breaking out their own lunches. <laughs> As Delilah sat down, Chelsea sat down next to her, holding her sack lunch in her hands.
and she was looking pensive, apparently mulling something. She saw Delilah's face, and her expression changed expect expectantly. Is something wrong, Delilah? You look a little pale. Delilah recounted what happened minutes before. When she was done, Chelsea looked surprised. That's odd, she said. 